so students uh, we will solve the factorials in physics in physics factorial is solved by taking the natural log first of all this is the first step so if we have any uh, quantity x x factorial so we take natural log of this quantity and it is equals to the uh, x natural log of x minus x we can solve this equation as well uh, and we can drive this formula that's natural log of x factorial is equals to x natural log of x minus x but it is in quanta in in statistical mechanics so uh, in this course we don't need to solve this uh, formula as well uh, by taking the natural log we will get x natural log of x minus x we will use this in our equation as we have uh, derivation for the distribution of ni particles in gi elementary cells uh, in the previous lecture we have developed w equals to pi pi varies from 1 to n gi gi factorial divided by ni factorial into gi minus ni factorial where gi is the number of states and i is the number of particles and uh, here is hence available this natural log of pi is equals to the summation because we are using this pi sign so taking the natural log of this pi we will get the summation sign according to the log formula taking a natural log on both sides natural log of w equals to the natural log of this quantity into natural log of gi factorial minus because it is in division form so in, in the log formula it will come in the uh, with the negative sign so minus into natural log of ni factorial plus because these two quantities in the denominator are multiplying so it will become in the uh, positive sign after using the log formula so log of gi minus ni factorial so we have applied the natural log of on both sides natural log of w is equals to summation i varies from 1 to n natural log of gi factorial minus natural log of ni factorial minus into plus minus natural log of gi minus ni so now here we applying the string approximation so natural log of gi becomes gi natural log of gi minus gi gi natural log of gi minus gi and for minus natural log of ni we will use the bracket sign ni natural log of ni minus ni this negative sign this one and this negative sign came from the formula minus this one natural log of gi minus ni gi minus ni natural log of gi minus ni minus gi minus ni so whenever we we uh, open these uh, brackets some of the quantities will cancel out and the remaining quantities will have natural log of w is summation sign from gi natural log of gi minus ni natural log of ni minus gi minus ni natural log of gi minus ni the other quantities will cancel out with each other by opening these brackets and using the negative sign uh, this is the distribution of ni particles uh, but we cannot check the distribution of the large number of particles so we want to check the distribution of small number of particles instead of the large number of particles for this we use the derivative with respect to ni so if we use the derivative of this equation this yellow equation natural log of n a uh, natural log of w uh, so d by d n i of natural log of w equals to derivative of this quantity then derivative of this quantity and derivative of the last quantity we have three quantities on the right side and one quantity on the left hand side so natural log of w the derivative of natural log of w becomes zero and natural log of ni we have uh, gi natural log of gi ni natural log of ni gi ni natural log of ni here gi uh, there is no quantity of ni available so it becomes zero uh, but for the uh, ni natural log of ni we have uh, uh, two types of equations two types of variables that is ni and natural log of ni so u into v is formula uh, for derivative is applied and here u and this natural log of gi and i is the v by applying this natural log of formula uh, and uh, opening the uh, derivatives of these two sides we will get 
by using this simple mathematics uh, we don't have any for any important thing to be discussed in this slide so move forward and uh, natural log of g i n i our n i d n i is equals to zero this is the function we get after solving so we can discuss this uh, on google meet as well according to the lagrangian uh, multipliers if we have any function and the condition that then multiply that condition uh, with any constant and then add in a function and put it equal to zero then the quantity will be simplified uh, here is the condition if we have a function plus any constant we will multiply with the condition that is given is equals to zero and we will get our required result this is called Lagrangian multiplier so uh, f is equals to uh, summation psi i varying from 1 to n natural log of gi ni over ni dni equals to 0 and we use constant alpha or the beta what is the conditions so for the conditions the first condition that comes out that the total number of particles are the summation of the whole particles ni ni that is i vary from 1 to capital n the second condition that comes out it is uh, the every particle have the energy and the total energy is equals to constant e dot you can see a small dot over there e dot is the total energy that is equals to the energy of the each particle divided by the number of particles so average energy and e dot is total energy so average energy per particle and e is the total energy of the particles by using these conditions uh, total energy e is equals to n times e dot uh, so e total is uh, e and i uh, i varies from 1 to capital n that is the second condition we have function in the minima so we have to convert condition in a minima by differentiating so we have two types of uh, differentiation uh, over n and over e taking differential on both sides d of n that is d of small uh, uh, ni and capital e d of e that is equals to the e dni so uh, these are the, these two conditions we will use in our formula and uh, now multiplying constant alpha or beta on the both sides uh, of the equation uh, on the left hand side alpha multiplied by 0 equals to 0 and alpha on the other hand side summation i varies from 1 to n dni so and similarly for energies we have we used the beta multiplied by 0 on the reference side and beta minus beta into a summation i varies from 1 to n e d and i on the right hand side so uh, we have converted condition in minima uh, now we have to add these condition in a function so we have this function we added these alpha on this yellow and this beta from this red one uh, in our original function these two condition we have added and equals to zero and uh, by solving these uh, this equation uh, natural log of gi and i over ni minus alpha uh, and uh, equals to uh, minus alpha minus beta e into dn i is equals to zero so by using this mathematics uh, to solve this we have two conditions and there are one is put d n i equals to zero with the summation sign and the second is to put natural log of g n i n i over n i minus alpha minus beta into e is equals to zero so uh, importantly uh, we can put we cannot put the first condition equal to zero because we are checking the distribution of the small number of particles so uh, we should put the second one that is natural log of gi minus ni over ni minus alpha minus beta into e is equals to zero therefore whenever we put this equation is equals to zero uh, alpha and minus beta comes to the other side uh, and we have this sort of equation natural log of gi minus ni over ni is equals to alpha minus plus beta into e and first of all we remove the natural log by taking the exponential on both sides so left hand side is equals to gi minus ni over ni equals to e power alpha plus beta into e and uh, by solving gi over ni minus ni over ni equals to 
the right hand side equation gi over ni with uh, ni cancels with ni so it becomes one come to the other side so e alpha e power alpha plus beta e plus one equals to gi over ni what is gi over ni gi is the number of states and i is the number of the particles we are checking distribution ni particles in gi elementary cells so gi over ni depends if we invert this equation from ni over gi so the right hand side will come one over e power alpha plus beta e plus one it means that ni particles are distributed in gi elementary cells with the function and the function is one over e power alpha plus beta e plus one and this is the function of energy we can see the value of e over here and therefore we can write that is the function f of e that is equals to ni over gi and is equals to 1 over e power alpha plus beta e plus 1 this function is distributed over the poly exclusion principle and this is the fermi dirac statistics actually so how can we, how can we use it, this formula for the fermi energy it is the maximum energy possessed by the free electron at the absolute zero temperature absolute zero temperature means zero kelvin or uh, 273 degree so uh, for me function f of e is equals to ni over gi 1 over e power alpha plus beta e plus 1 uh, we put alpha equals to e that is the fixed energy of the particle and beta is 1 over kt where k is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature we have put uh, 0 kelvin or uh, any other temperature if we need uh, in different examples and e is equals to ef that is called the fermi level so fermi energy is dni over g that is equals to 1 over e e minus ef over kt plus 1 so this function means d and i over g i means the number of particles are changing but the number of states are fixed here d n means the number of particles are changing but g is the number of states energy states which is fixed so uh, different material have the different fermi, fermi energies uh, and its values so what is the fermi level it is the highest energy state occupied by an electron at absolute zero temperature below the fermi level all energy states are completely filled and one electron with one electron all energy states are completely filled with one electron whereas above the energy level energy states are empty so it is the basic definition below this level all energy states are filled and above all energy states are empty and we, are, we have importantly used the zero Kelvin temperature. So Fermi level is the level that breaks filled and unfilled energy level into two parts. And the energy corresponding to this level is called the Fermi level. We can uh, assume that it should be in between the valence band and the conduction band for the semiconductors. And this is called the forbidden energy gap between conduction and the valence band. Now, Calculate the probability of an electronic state to be occupied at 20 degrees Celsius, importantly 20 degrees Celsius, if the energy of these states lies 0.1 electron, 0.11 electron volt above and 0.11 electron volt below the Fermi level. So how, how we can solve this example? Probability of occupying an energy level E is f of e. We have derived this formula ni over gi is equals to 1 over uh, e to power e minus ef over kt plus 1. So probability of occupying an energy level 0.11 electron volt uh, above Fermi level is actually we have to put e minus ef instead of e minus ef we have put 0.11 over kt plus 1. So f of, uh, ni over gi is equals to 1 over exponential of this value. Uh, 40 uh, we use 20 degrees celsius convert this celsius into kelvin and put it here and solve this equation so f of e is equals to 0 0.0126 by using the calculator so probability of occupying an elect energy level 0 0.11 electron volt below the fermi level is actually 0 0.987 so uh, this is all about the fermi level if you have any question you may comment uh, uh, in this for this video.
and thanks for watching thank you